So the American Ornithological Society, whose mission is to advance the scientific understanding of birds, has decided that it will do so by renaming them. Why? Because the names of so many birds right now are racist and otherwise offensive. And apparently, this comes after a highly charged and publicised debate. I'm sure that when you think about birds, what's on your mind first and foremost as pious people is, is that, is that bird name offensive? Is it racist? Who's that bird named after? And did that person ever do something that I consider to be morally egregious? Because to these people, that's exactly what they think. Yes, because now even birds are offensive. I, I can't help but think, you know, how hard must it be to have this worldview where you can't actually go bird watching without finding it to be a stressful occasion. Because that is actually the reality of some people. Yeah. So it's it's not even just like a, a small handful of birds. No, dozens. More birds than you probably know the names of are being renamed. Over 100 birds across the Americas need, need new names. They use the word need. I found it interesting because for me, I, I can't imagine there being an occasion where I'd say that the birds need new names. Um, cause this isn't really high on my priority list, but but yeah, this is this is the priority for some. See, the the birds were named after people involved, usually in the discovery and and identification, or occasionally, you know, it's someone who played an important role in history. But they were never named like because of their association to say slavery, which is one of the things that uh, so many of these people are upset about. It's like the the bird is named due to the contribution of the of some person at some point in history, and that person may have also owned slaves at some point or defended the institution of slavery. But they were never like nobody ever said, "Hey, that person owns slaves. We should name a bird after him." Like that's not actually the mantra. But it seems like in the heads of some of these people, that's the way they think. That's, that's what they, they kind of see, because they see a person as primarily identified and defined by the thing that is outside of their world, you know, the thing that they, they dislike even, or that is, is even wrong. But that, that's, that's the totality of the person taken from contemporary eyes and, and looked upon them. Um, but like, take some examples, okay? So I'm not really a bird person. I mean, I like birds existing, but I don't go bird watching, and I don't know the names of of birds generally. But some of those that are being renamed, there's Audubon's Shearwater, which was, like I was saying before, this was named after one of the most established bird illustrators of the 19th century, John James Audubon. He also owned slaves. So the bird was named after him because he was a massive bird illustrator who was really obviously into birds because who else would illustrate birds um but the fact that he owned slaves is the reason that it has to be renamed like he has to be sort of erased from history basically and that and that's what's really happening here it's it kind of goes together with the removal of statues but in some sense this is even more departed you know from from what you see there it's somewhat like the renaming of so many different like colleges that were named after the, the people who gave funds, right? Um, we're renaming these different halls and these different buildings because the person who, who supported the institution a long time ago also did this thing that we dislike, um, even though it wasn't named for the thing that we dislike. So it's just kind of... Um, and then there's the another bird, the Scots Oriole. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Like I said, not a bird person. But anyway, named after Winfield Scott, who was a major figure in US history. So he wasn't a bird guy, but he was a commanding general of the United States Army from 1841 to 1861, so 20-year period there. He took part in the War of 1812. He took part in the, in the Mexican-American War, uh, in the early stages of the American Civil War. Um, but also... And most problematically, he was involved in the relocation of American Indians. So, therefore, 
we can't have that bird. <laughs> the bird needs a new name. And so it's kind of interesting because you take a, a case like that and it's like you've got all these different major things that he did in US history, but then there's this one part that is seen problematically through a contemporary lens. And for that reason, we have to pretend like he doesn't exist. And in whatever way we can sort of erase him from history. So you'd erase uh, any bird <laughs> named after him, um, and also any university hall or remove a statue, and that kind of thing to sort of like completely vanquish this person from history. And I think it's, I think it's problematic on, on multiple levels, seriously, because, because people are nuanced creatures. Like we, we, we make mistakes, like all of us, right? And we have periods in our life that we look back on with some regret, and then we have different accomplishments that we're more likely to try and shine a light on. And that's, that's where it is to be a person, and you, you try and grow. And what we're doing now, by we I actually mean the, the, the left, are trying to do is er erase any mention of a person who may have at some point had a fault. And I think that's really tragic and problematic, especially for young people. Who never see stories of people who have who were nuanced themselves, right? Who had these periods of ups and downs, and um, you know morality, and then also immoral decisions, because this makes up, you know, what it is to be human. And then you have like these high rates of depression amongst modern youth. And I think part of it is actually the fact that they that they think that their particular time of distress or some you know embarrassing thing that happened to them is completely unique to them and outside of this the scope of of what's normal and i think it's really harmful to try and create a world in which we fail to see that everybody has <clears throat> has good and bad in their past and you know we can we can we can look past the fact that that some people have done things that that are regretful, or that especially with like contemporary eyes, we can see that something is is wrong or shouldn't have been done. It's, but I mean, I I spoke recently about the the attempt to create like a year zero moment um, by our American left, and I think that that kind of combines uh, with this. But it was the president of the AOS who said, "quote." There is power in a name, and some English bird names have associations with the past that continue to be exclusionary and harmful today. End quote. Okay. So, who's feeling excluded by the Audubon bird? I mean, I'm not trying to be sarcastic, but really... Who sees a bird flying in the sky, recognizes who it's named after, says this guy owned slaves at one point, and therefore it feels excluded, um, or feels offended by by the by the flapping bird. I I'm sorry, but if you do, like y you have been so unbelievably sheltered, because the rest of us would kind of have other things to to be worried about. And th it's not harmful. Like this woman, um, Colleen Handel, who said, you know, that it's it, it's harmful. These bird associations with the past are harmful today. No, they're not. Nobody is actually harmed. Some people are offended, and they can be offended, I suppose, or they can grow up and and be adults that that's also an option i would recommend it to them but this whole thing about renaming birds it's completely useless virtue signaling so that you got this this organization that is basically pretending to be in some way great to 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 fix historical wrongs and nothing is fixed history is still as it was right nothing has actually been remedied here instead this organization just wants to pat itself on the back and also they can all write in their resumes that they fix the injustice of the racist bird names. M maybe that's their moment of life piety to stand in testament against whatever, you know, crappy things they also did. 
who knows? <laughs> who knows? But this is probably just the latest incident in which we, I mean, our society just goes nuts, frankly, and decides to, to remedy racism by, by doing nothing, by doing absolutely nothing. Yeah. If you enjoyed that video, please don't forget to like it. Also, I have other videos that you might enjoy. I have links in the description down below as to how you can support this work. So thank you so much.